Welcome, welcome. Um, happy Monday, and uh, it's great to see you all. Um, my name is Bettina Swigger, and I'm the CEO of Downtown Slow. And with me, as always, um, on our Monday morning calls is our um, wonderful consultant, Garrett Olson, who works with Resolute Associates. And we hired Garrett uh, way back about, gosh, four or five months ago, um, pre-COVID-19, to do some strategic planning for our organization. Um, and in the pivot, he has um, very graciously actually volunteered his time to continue um, helping us with this very important effort as we move through the, the COVID-19 response and recovery program. So um, I just wanna let you know that I was having a couple of internet problems just a few minutes ago. Um, also co-hosting on this call is our COO, Rachel Maiarino. And um, hopefully if I disappear, Rachel can jump back in. But um, we've got a really packed agenda for you today. We've got some great updates um, from the Small Business Development Center, from um, the, uh, the Chamber, from um, one of our city council members, um, Andy Pease, will be sharing a really exciting project. Um, and we also have some creative projects to share with you that are gonna be really, I think, bring a great smile and maybe even a little tear of joy to your eye. So um, thanks for being here today with us. And uh, with that, wanna just go through, um, we, have a little, we have a little slideshow that we show here every week. And um, a little bit of Zoom etiquette, you are muted. Um, if you find yourself unmuted and you are not speaking, um, please do mute yourself just so that, that we don't have a weird background noise. Um, and um, our board of directors has been meeting regularly. So hello to all of you wonderful board of directors um, out there. Um, we've been meeting weekly and uh, I did provide a written update to all of you yesterday with some more internal operations news about our organization. Some of that will be shared with the entire membership as well. We have about 44 people on the call right now. We expect that some people will continue to join us as we move forward. So we are still in this mercurial phase of being in four phases and we're still in the public health directives. Um, we're still sharing information. Some of us have received economic relief, some of us are still waiting, um, but the overall economic recovery certainly will take a while. Um, and we're looking at this as it unfolds um, as a multi-month and perhaps even multi-year project. And um, I know for I, last week I, I mentioned that I had started, like many Americans, I've become obsessed with jigsaw puzzles during this time, and I started a 2,000 piece jigsaw puzzle last weekend. Um, I'm now, I think I've put together maybe two thirds of the pieces and it still feels like there is so much more to do. And I think it's the perfect analogy for what we are all trying to figure out to move through this space. So with that, Garrett, can you take it away and tell us where we are today, Monday, May yeah. 4th? Uh, so just a quick update on um, the actual numbers behind COVID as of yesterday, 201 cases um, still uh, at, at one death in the county. Um, there was some dialogue uh, by uh, Dr. Bornstein on Friday about masks. Um, we're still advocating for following CDC recommendation, which is to wear facial coverings if you are not able to maintain six feet of uh, physical distancing. And we know that um, more businesses are implementing that. Um, I believe Costco, as of today, if you show up at Costco and you don't have a facial covering, you will not be allowed in. Um, the shelter at home is still in effect through the governor's office through May 16th, and slides are jumping around, um, and the start uh, guide was released um, on Friday. We're going to go over that in just a little bit, um, but one of the things that all of our public health officials from local to federal have been really adamant about is that as we um, recover and re-engage and reopen our businesses across the nation. We want to make sure that we do so thoughtfully based on science um, to avoid which has, what has been historic with pandemics, um, which is the second phase. So um, responding to science rather than a date um, and making sure that we're in a position to both open up and then slowly ratchet back as the science um, indicates. So next slide. Oh, you're muted. Sorry. Gosh, you'd think we'd know how to do this by now. Um, 
We'd like to call on Judy um, from the SBDC. Can you give us your weekly update on where we are? And I'm specifically interested, Judy, if you could answer a question about how many businesses have applied in San Luis Obispo and maybe how many have received funding, if you have that information yeah. handy. Yeah. Hi, Bettina, good morning. Uh, first and foremost, I really want to share some information about the EIDL loan. Uh, the portal reopened this morning at exactly 9.26 a.m. So, but, uh, so good news and bad news. It is only reopened for uh, ag businesses, businesses, farmers that produce um, uh, produce. Um, so it's only available for ag businesses of less than 100 employees. Uh, it is open. Um, all the idle loan applications are being processed on a first come first serve basis. So all of those who applied prior to April 15, April 15 was when the portal shut down. Those applications are being processed as we speak uh, on a first come first serve basis. Uh, but we are encouraging all ag businesses to apply immediately as of right now. It is on a first come first serve basis ongoing as well. So the sooner you apply, the more likely you are to be in the queue. Um, the other big, big highlight I wanted to make is that uh, applications that received an SBA application number beginning with the number two, if your SBA loan application number for idle begins with a number two, and those are for the most part all applications that were done prior to March 30th, you must reapply. You absolutely must reapply immediately. Um, those applications will be processed in the order they were submitted. My understanding is they will be processed in the order they were originally submitted, but you must be reapply to maintain your position in the queue for when you did apply prior to March 30th. So I know this is a little complex, but the bottom line is if you're an ag business, apply now. The portal is up and running. And if you have an application number that begins with a two, reapply immediately on the portal. So those are the big two highlights that just came out this morning. Um, regarding your other question, Bettina, yes, we do have some numbers. Um, I'm going to pull up, well, actually, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you about, um, sorry, I'm going to get into my uh, Google Sheet real quick so I can give you specific numbers. But as of um, today, and we're getting data on the hour on a very regular basis, so these numbers are changing uh, frequently. We have worked with approximately 400 clients over the last eight weeks, 400 businesses. Uh, we have gotten feedback from, um, I wanna say a little under 150 businesses that have obtained loans. Um, the total at this point in time is approximately $11 million in loans that have come in in the last couple of weeks. That's literally in the last two weeks, uh, $11 million. So we know that the data is not entirely up to date. We're still receiving data on a daily basis, on an hourly basis. So those numbers will continue going up. Um, that's all I have to report right now. Thank you, Judy. Um, so we don't have ag businesses in our downtown. Um, do you have any insight as to whether the SBA is considering doing more funding for non-ag businesses through this next round of the idle? Uh, not at this time, no. Um, that being said, the PPP loan application is open and is taking applications right now. So uh, that is definitely a pathway that's still open and available right now for local businesses. So we do encourage business owners to continue applying through the PPP pathway. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. That's kind of disappointing news, but understand yeah. that. And, and one more thing I could add to that is uh, the PUA program is up and running. The Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program through the EDD. Um, that may actually apply to a number of our local downtown businesses. It allows sole proprietors, business owners um, that are sole proprietors, independent contractors to apply 
for unemployment benefits. Um, and so that portal did open on um, April 28th, which is, I think was the day following our last update. Our update was last Monday, the portal opened on Tuesday. Uh, so the portal is up and running. Uh, one recommendation we can make for that portal is it has been swamped, just like Idle was when it first opened. We're encouraging um, applicants to not despair, to keep applying. Those that stay the course and try to reapply do eventually get through. And we found from feedback from clients that the best time to apply seems to be after 8 p.m. and before 8 a.m. So if you can apply late evening or early morning, um, that's definitely a recommended time frame to be able to get through more smoothly without um, the portal freezing on you. That's really helpful. Thank you for sharing that because we had a lot of people um, who were reaching out to us last week saying we want to apply, especially with you know the hairdressers and the barbers and the massage yeah. therapists, et cetera. Um, so that's good. Okay, so before 8 a.m. after 8 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Judy. And um, we are doing our poll right now. So we're trying to figure out if you did apply for assistance and if you, you uh, received it. So that is running now. Um, thank you, Judy, so much. And um, I want to also thank you for connecting us with a local vendor who provides, um, who makes hand sanitizer. Um, and I'll be talking a little bit more about that in a minute. So um, great. Okay. And up next, we have, um, we'll, we'll run this poll for just a, a little bit longer. Um, are we good to go on the poll, Rachel? Let's leave it for one more minute and then we'll close it out. Okay, and while that's going, I'm gonna invite Jim D'Antona, CEO of the Chamber of Commerce, to give a little one minute update on what's happening at the Chamber. Good morning. Uh, thanks for having me here. Uh, so glad to be here. And just, yeah, real quick, uh, this Thursday, we're, we have our standard web free webinars that are going on uh, from two to three. Uh, we will be having our uh, county and city representatives uh, joining us for a conversation about the START Guide. Uh, we got to see that uh, go out on Friday. So uh, we know there are uh, a ton of questions. Um, and not a lot of specific answers. Certainly we're waiting for some of those things to take place uh, at the state level with the governor before any of this can move forward. So we know there's gonna be questions and we, you know, we certainly applaud the county and the city for working together and getting ahead of uh, the game on it. Um, additionally, um, on Friday, we're having, we're doing a little thing we call working lunch from 12 to 12.30 on Fridays, uh, it's usually a Facebook Live um, from our page. And so um, we're looking for, we had uh, Dr. Bornstein on last Friday, um, public health director, and she was fabulous talking about who she was, like how'd she get where she was at. So if you get a chance, I would check that out just so you get to know the person behind, the person the, who's making all these uh, decisions. And this week we'll have uh, Kevin Harris from Slow Rap. Uh, so we can start talking about the arts and the reopening and because they've suffered tremendously and, and have a real conversation about uh, what does it look like going into the future. So that's all we got. And thank you for giving us the time. We're always happy to be here. Awesome. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, that was a really enjoyable conversation you had with Dr. Borenstein last week. And thank you for giving Kevin Harris some, some screen time. Um, and if you haven't checked out the intermission show at Slow Rep's YouTube page, you've, you've got to do it. It's uh, it's a very specific kind of experience and you need to have it. Um, so uh, with that, we're going to go into, um, actually, I think we have a little update from Molly Kano with the city of Slow. Is that correct, Rachel? Yes. Okay. Molly, are you on the line? Sure. Hi. Yes. Thank you. Good morning. Just wanted to give you all a quick update this morning. Um, you know, we're going to dive into some more of the, the details that's, that are going on here at the city, uh, but just wanted to give you a quick update and introduce you, reintroduce many of you guys to Lee Johnson. Um, the city um, has contracted with Lee to come back as our interim economic development manager. So welcome, Lee. We're excited to have you back. Um, Lee had previously been with the city for about five years um, and then uh, took a break to go um, 
explore some other opportunities, um, but now has come back to help uh, the city, to guide the city um, through his strong leadership um, and to play a key role in our economic recovery as we go down this path. So just wanted to quickly update you guys all on that and turn it over to you, Bettina. Great, thanks so much, Molly. We're happy to have Lee back. And um, I know that um, I worked with him um, several years ago when I was in another position in San Luis Obispo. Um, I was on the board of Leadership Slow with Lee. So I'm looking forward to connecting with him and um, seeing him back in this position. So with that, um, as you know, on Friday, the county released the start guide or the steps to adapt and reopen together. Um, and this is a draft guide. So uh, Dr. Bornstein and some representatives from county leadership announced this at 3.15 on Friday. I'm sure all of you, like me, spent the entire weekend reading every single page of that 64-page uh, document. Um, and uh, we are not gonna really go into detail about it right now because there are so many different pieces to the guide. But what we would really like for you to do is um, open the guide, download it, and provide your feedback directly to the county. Um, the phases of the reopening, I wanna just share this one graphic with you here, um, are very clear. It's a three-phased reopening and we're currently in pre-phase one. Um, when we go through the phases, it's very likely that we will go back a phase um, depending on what the public health um, reality is. So let's say we um, go into phase one, but then we have a lot more infections and our hospitals start to get overrun. We may go back into pre-phase one, or if we make it through phase one, which I believe is a minimum of 14 days, and then we go into phase two. If phase two, things aren't looking so good, we may go back to phase one. So the reason it's kind of like a, a thermometer as opposed to um, a directional arrow is that it will toggle back and forth depending on the, the public health emergency. Garrett, do you have anything you wanna to add to this? There's, there's some great guidance in the back uh, sections uh, in 15 different sections pertaining to um, different business sectors. So if you're looking for how to be um, creative in anticipating that move from pre-phase one where we are now into phase one and phase two and phase three. Highly recommend that you take a look at that area. Um, I, um, Bettina and I had a chance and Rachel had a chance to talk about this yesterday. We appreciate the fact that the county got this out so quickly. There are aspects of reopening that are still being worked on, specifically how um, the reopening is going to impact uh, retail like clothing outlets where people try on clothes and, and take them off. So it's not a it's not completely done, um, but it really is our county leaning forward and being prepared, giving you the information um, again to Bettina's point so you can give feedback on this draft plan. Um, and, and kind of some of the numbers real quick for you to wrap your mind around. Um, phase one gatherings limited to about a maximum of 10 people. Phase two, uh, a maximum of about 50 people. And phase three will still have some limitations, but those will be more specifically driven towards um, vulnerable populations. So take a look at that. If you have feedback, um, please do make sure that you reach out directly through the website at the county and give them that feedback. Yeah, and I do want to thank the uh, people on the board of directors who served on our downtown sector team. We had a chance to review the draft that was before this draft that was released on Friday. Um, and I do want to just acknowledge the fact that the retail section of this draft guide has a big yellow section that says TBD. Um, I encourage you to reach out to the county and ask for more guidance. Um, they're awaiting, my understanding is that they're awaiting further direction from the CDC about um, safe ways to do things like try on apparel and um, maybe browse and touch merchandise. And they're waiting for some more clear um, guidance from the scientists on how that can be um, developed. So everybody everywhere is going through this same kind of similar um, set of conflicting guidance and, um, and different programs. In fact, I used to live in Colorado and uh, a dear friend of mine, Cal Polygrad, incidentally, runs the Downtown Colorado Springs um, Downtown Association, and she shared with me their county guide, which um, was very different from ours. And I was on a call this morning with um, the International Downtown Association, 
and there were uh, leaders from the UK, from Canada, and from um, Ireland, and they were talking about how their cities and counties are also having different guidelines in place as well. So this is a global phenomenon that we're experiencing. Um, but we do really appreciate the fact that our county leaders are giving so much um, thought and care to getting feedback. So please give your feedback so that we can do this. Um, and now for something completely different, um, I wanna call on our uh, council member, Andy Pease. And I, Andy, I'm just gonna let you take the, the floor and talk about some of the creative ideas the city has for um, moving into phase one. Great, thank you so much. Thanks for having me here. Um, I wanted to kind of introduce a specific program that you've um, maybe been hearing something about and let you know where we're at and, and kind of the feedback that we're gonna be looking for. And the, the basic premise is providing a, additional outside space um, in the city right of ways and sidewalks, streets to um, to be able to help to have that three foot dis or the six foot distancing as we reopen, um, as well as outdoor dining, pickup, delivery. Uh, thanks. Uh, so the uh, concept which you've probably seen is this, it's a parklet uh, in which we take a street parking spot and, con and um, on a kind of semi-permanent but still movable way create some dining space um, or sitting space or other type of thing. We would um, have platforms that would be flush with the sidewalk so it would be accessed from the sidewalk side and uh, it will go in front of those businesses that are interested. So they're approximately eight feet wide by 20 feet long, um, which is the size of a standard parking space downtown, but you could um, have a few in place. And in fact, it could even be wider depending on what street it's on and how we um, alter traffic. There would be an enclosure on the edges, either you know rail or planter. And, um, and it could be a program that's up in place uh, up to a year. Uh, it could be seasonal. It could be something that is so fabulous that we keep it um, long term. But the the main point is is that right now this is kind of is will be funded by the city uh, and just to try to support um, local businesses in the reopening. Uh, we don't have the specific design nailed down. We have a team with a, a few designers, uh, city staff on the transportation side, uh, a builder, and we're kind of working out those uh, details, but these are just a few of the types of examples that happen in other cities. The traffic flow downtown, we're looking at ways to shift that as well. Uh, we've talked about that long term in the downtown concept plan, so this might be kind of the nudge to, to do that. Um, so uh, we want to make sure that there's equal opportunity on both sides of the street. We want to make sure that there's still space for, obviously, for fire access, for passenger pickup and drop off, deliveries. Um, so those are the types of things. And perhaps some, um, you know, uh, weekend closures altogether. So the next steps for us in the works were one of the main things that we're trying to um, uh, streamline is the process for the uh, ABC permitting. So we've been working with them. They're open to the concept. The main barrier right now just seems to be time so that uh, a permit could be expanded to this outdoor seating area. That's uh, part of the point of the um, perimeter enclosure of some kind. And there's other requirements like only the server can cross the sidewalk with a drink. You can't you know, take it out yourself. Um, we're figuring out our own policies, agreements. Um, we're uh, thinking throughout the city that this will um, have an opportunity. So there might be some parking lots uh, that can convert a few spaces, so we're easing up on the parking requirement. And then, you know, how do we use Mission Plaza, the weekend street closures, etc. So we're at the point right now, we really want to figure out, well, what's the interest of the business community, especially downtown, so we can figure out, you know, is this like the entire blocks long or, or um, or is it just a few that would go like, yeah, I guess that's worth it. Um, so, and also are there objections? So who's interested, where are the objections, how much space people need to make this worthwhile? 
and any other considerations. So I know Bettina has been um, uh, putting together a, a survey or maybe it's gone out already and uh, happy to answer questions or take feedback offline. Thank you so much, Andy. Yeah, and um, we did do a little Facebook business group poll over the weekend um, and we got just a couple people responding. Um, some people are really excited about it. Uh, a few people did express some concern about eliminating parking um, so I just want to make you aware of that. And uh, I think it's just, it's a great idea to take back the streets um, as we look at, you know, increasing pedestrian traffic through the downtown, but still maintaining that physical distance. Um, and also giving businesses the chance to make some revenue that they have been, I mean, if, if you look at a business that's trying to open with 25, 30% capacity, it just doesn't pencil out. So thank you for taking those concerns. Could, could you talk about Andy, oh. we did get one question, um, and is the city going to be adjusting the indoor seating maximums in restaurants that participate in this? I think the uh, the guy the great question. Um, the guidelines overall are going to be um, currently what we're seeing is that tables would need to be six feet apart. Uh, and if you have tables six feet apart, just depending on the arrangement, we're doing some diagrams. There might have to be eight feet depending on the circulation that's needed and which way people are facing. Uh, but that seems to be the main guideline. So that would be required indoor and outdoor for this kind of the next um, couple of phases still require that type of distancing. So this would, um, in terms of the capacity inside, um, you know, it, it is however many you can fit. And it's one of the questions also like, you know, do we have the right furniture to be able to go outside? Are we moving things in and out? There's a lot of logistics that way. Um, and then also, and I think that was implied, but we're also thinking that, gosh, you know, would retail, would this be helpful? Would a retail store want to put out a, a rack um, on a kind of a platform extension or have some, you know, additional queuing area or something like that? So I think it, it uh, could be applicable to, to retail um, environments as well as restaurants, coffee shops, et cetera. That's great. And Andy, what's the best way um, for you to get feedback? Do you want us to email? Should they go through me? Um, well, uh, I think if you've sent out the survey and people want to fill that out in kind of an organized kind of way, but otherwise anybody's welcome to just send it to um, directly to me, APs at slowcity.org. Great. And I'll okay. Gather them up. Thank you. Yeah. And so there is a, a Facebook business group poll that's active right now. So if you want to go in there and fill out your answer, um, I will capture that and send it to you, Andy. Um, right. And then we'll also probably do a couple of targeted outreach to specific businesses that say they're interested in this. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. And we'll provide updates. You know, it's moving pretty quickly. So, you know, uh, we'll provide updates as we have them. Awesome. Thanks for your creative leadership on that. We appreciate sure. it. Fun project. Much. I'm excited. Totally. Okay, and now I'm going to invite Whitney Cheney, our farmer's market manager, to give us a little bit of uh, results of a, of, of a survey that she sent out last week about farmer's market. And the reason that we're sharing this information with you um, is not just because we know you all love farmer's market, our beloved Thursday night tradition, but also because we think that the results from this poll are going to be really helpful as we determine the consumer's desire to come back to town, um, to gather and to come and go back into a new normal, whatever that might look like. So Whitney? Hi, yeah, thank you. So that number is actually incorrect. Um, I didn't actually, our deadline for our survey was May 1st, but I didn't actually close it. Uh, I didn't see any harm in allowing responses to trickle in. So right now we're at 912. So people are still finding it and still submitting. Uh, the reason for this survey was to really get a pulse on what our local community, um, as well as anyone who follows us on Facebook, uh, follows our newsletters, our Instagram. Uh, we just wanted to get a sense for what people look for in our farmer's market, uh, what they are concerned about if we were to relaunch it. Uh, we didn't preface anything on this survey in terms of how we would relaunch it. So a lot of the responses, and, and we wanted it to be that way so that we could kind of get an honest sense of what people were thinking. Uh, we wouldn't open our doors as we were. No one is going to be opening their doors as they are. 
Um, but the overall consensus from a lot of our survey commenters was that uh, they are nervous about the people, about the size of our market, which is why we are not currently running. Uh, certified markets are an essential business. They have been since this order went into place. Uh, we have a certified market within our market, that is the farmers. Uh, everything else is considered non-certified, so those would not be a part of the phase one if, if we get to that point. Um, but as you can see on the slide, about half of our participants of the survey said they come about three to four times a year. Um, a slide that's not on here, there's about 96% of these surveys are local residents of our county. So a lot of our locals come to our market, but they don't come to it every week, which I think we all kind of know. Uh, we are very fortunate that we have several markets around our county. Uh, and the Thursday night one is seen a bit as more of a tourist driven market, which a lot of these large scale venues are. Um, so we want to definitely keep that in mind. And the survey has really kind of showed us that everyone is mostly concerned about the people, about the consistency of regulations. Um, but it was really telling on how many people responded to this thing. We opened it on Tuesday, April 28th, and we have over 900 responses, uh, which just shows that people are very proud of their community, but they also have feelings for how it wants to be reintroduced after all of this. Um, the slide that we're currently on, the top portion, the option was attending the downtown slow Thursday night with crowd control in place. About 46% noted that they would want that. Um, this, this one is what you are more comfortable with, um, purchasing produce from the farmers only, about 65%, which seems to be the dominating, which makes sense. A lot of people do want their fresh produce, and that is our main concern right now, is getting access to that. 30% um, would not feel comfortable, which is about right. I think there's, you're going to have to make your own decisions. Um, they could choose as many of these as they wanted on this survey. So it's not like they had to just pick one box. So do keep that in mind. Um, Bettina, do you wanna to go to the next one? Uh, the next one, if you want it, if we were to open with only our farmers, so no prepared food, no music, none of the bells and whistles that go on to it, um, would you attend? And about 45% said yes, 16.9 said a hard no, and 37.8 said maybe. And I think the maybe can kind of be interpreted as they kind of probably want to see what it's going to look like. They're going to want to see if it suits their needs, if they want to put that risk as they define it uh, to attend. But there's definitely a mixed bag. There's not an overwhelming percentage that would just straight out attend. So that does put pause. Um, I don't know if other large scale events around are conducting polls to get a feel but it is part of the planning discussion where you really wanna get a sense of if you open your doors, who is going to be there to greet you? Is your customer going to show up? Um, and then this is a word cloud. So I took, there were about 400 people that submitted comments. Uh, the last question on it was an open-ended comments, concerns, feedback. Uh, and this word cloud pulled just a bunch of different words. Uh, it is designed the think word that's in white. That's just part of the design. It's not actually highlighting anything specific, but the larger the word, the more it was referenced. So as you can see, the dominating feeling is the amount of people and then the masks and concern, produce, what they want. Uh, the word wear is up in the green leaves. People want wearing masks. Um, but you have the whole spectrum. I had someone in here that was so excited because they had their wedding here in July of last year. And part of their wedding weekend was to invite people to kick it off at the market, which by definition is bringing a bunch of people from other places into our town. So we want to be really respectful of that concern. Um, we also had someone that said that they don't want us to stop cruise night. So if you have been downtown the last few weeks, we don't have a market and so cruise night, which we were started to stop, has relaunched, which is crazy. But um, it, was, it was really cool to see the support. I think overall you can see that our residents of San Luis Obispo are very passionate about who's coming to our town, how we are reopening and that we do it safely. So a lot of eyes will be on us because we are considered a large scale venue. Um, but we are working with the Slow County Farmers Market Association who brings our farmers in to try to find a way to kind of phase back in safely and effectively. Thank you, Whitney. And uh, yeah, it's so interesting to look at these, these word crowd clouds and there's definitely a desire for people to have more clear guidance about masks. 
Um, if you share that opinion, I invite you to provide that feedback to the county. Um, and I also want to give a shout out to the city of SLO who has installed hand washing sinks, um, different stations around the downtown. Those are in place as of last week. Um, and it's really great to see such considerations for our public safety already, even though we, have, we are still in that pre-phase one section. Um, so I hope that this gives you some insight, not just into the you know, sausage factory of the downtown slow farmers market contingency planning, but also as you are beginning to think about reopening your businesses or your facilities, what the appetite is for those services to um, take place. So with that in mind, um, the Economic Activities Committee of our Board of Directors met last week and we've been talking about the possibility of raising some funds through our Friends of Downtown Slow 501c3 organization where we can accept um, tax deductible charitable donations um, to provide some support for businesses in the downtown. And there was a consensus among the group that we weren't going to be able to raise a significant amount of money that would be a significant influx of cash to provide really you know, meaningful support. Um, and so what we were gonna do was either going to be symbolic, helpful, or significant. And we decided to go for symbolic and helpful. And what we decided to do is we will be providing welcome back to business kits for each of the ground floor businesses um, in the downtown who will be opening during phase one. And we've been uh, connected through Judy Mahan um, at the SBDC with a local distillery that makes sanitizer. And our ambassador, Austin, who will be going back into service um, part-time this week, will be helping to distribute those welcome back to business kits. So if you would like to donate to that, our board of directors um, had already committed $7,000 in unrestricted funds um, to our 501c3 at 2019 calendar year end. And now that money will be matched with donations um, so that we can provide the materials that are needed and we can use our collective buying power um, to purchase those items. So we hope that that will be helpful for all of you. Um, and if you have ideas about what you would like to see included in those kits, please reach out to us um, in another context, uh, just offline. So with that in mind, and with the feedback that you just heard about Farmer's Market, um, I am giving you all some news before this goes public uh, this week. And as you all probably were expecting, um, our organization has made the decision to postpone our 25th anniversary season of Concerts in the Plaza until 2021. Prior to the COVID-19 emergency, our team uh, led by our fabulous events manager, Nisha Johnston, had put together um, a fantastic lineup of 14 bands and we were set to launch a new singer-songwriter series um, to celebrate our 25th anniversary. We even had our poster art ready to go. Um, and then this happened. So um, with a lot of uncertainty about whether it would be safe to bring people together, whether it would be legally viable to bring people together, we've made the decision to postpone our 25th anniversary season until 2021. Um, we do have a small group that is gonna be working on some kind of a virtual experience that will not necessarily be um, a weekly experience. We're not quite sure what that will look like. We're looking to partner with some local musicians and uh, Big Big Slow, who've been doing some house party concerts, um, to bring you some kind of reminder of that Concerts in the Plaza series. But uh, I'm sorry to say that it will not be taking place as we know it uh, in this summertime. So probably not a surprise to anybody, but you um, now have the official word from us. So with that in mind, um, we're gonna go back into our weekly polls. Garrett, if you wanna talk a little bit about the results for last year, we're gonna launch our polls each week, week over week, we ask the same questions so we can begin to determine some trends and see what's happening. Absolutely, Bettina. So the poll is launched um, and every week, as a reminder, we ask you the same questions. Sometimes we add additional responses 
um, really this is an opportunity for us to understand where you are and how we can put, position downtown slow to advocate for you. Um, and we do understand that um, the city is very interested in the trends uh, of the downtown association, downtown slow business uh, members. Uh, and so we've been sharing this information with them. Um, so today your most immediate concern as of last week, um, obviously the large one is immediate access to stimulus funds. And if we can go forward, we can just see how um, that, that has changed, um, where that continues to, to rise up. And, and sadly, and this was a trend that started about three weeks ago, um, after some, some really um, wonderful sense of, of resilience, we see that um, that darker blue line, businesses feeling that they're on sure footing um, has, has considerably gone down over time. Um, we are seeing an increase in the need uh, for access to cash, and that's borne out by this next graphic. Um, that your uh, number one interest, 83%, is uh, short-term revenue from uh, clients and customers. Um, and we've seen from the very beginning a great response from our entrepreneurial business owners in pivoting um, with most businesses already having made that uh, change for their new uh, online presence. Um, most pressing need, um, go ahead and go forward, most net pressing need over the coming week, last week you said, again, uh, lack of short-term revenue from customers and clients um, and diversifying your business activities again stays low. We can see that those have hovered at about the same level throughout this experience. Um, so downtown slow does advocate for their members and the thing that has been consistent that you're looking for assistance on is uh, rent freeze or assistance. Um, and that uh, if we move forward, we can see how that has played out over time. So that's that, um, that arcing red line up at the top. We do see a slight decrease and without digging into each one of your experience on why that's a decrease, um, we, we know that you are either getting the help that you need or you come to realize that you're not gonna get the help that you need. Um, and that issue of tax relief, as we saw rent freeze or assistance start to come down, we saw rent uh, really, or tax relief starting to come up. So they kind of go hand in hand. Um, moving forward, um, we're now seeing almost uh, perfect uh, quadrants of pie shapes um, uh, regarding your current employer employee uh, payroll experience. Um, with one quarter saying that you continue staffing at pre-COVID levels um, and don't anticipate a change in the future. Um, but, but sadly, um, we are seeing uh, that bottom half um, that 50% 50, uh, 50 of you have um, issued furloughs or layoffs to greater than 50% of your staff. So next slide, we'll see how this played out over time. That red line is um, staffing levels staying consistent with where they were um, and not changing. You can see that coming down. Um, and then that green um, line in the middle there with a, with a tremendous um, increase three weeks ago um, with layoffs um, greater than 50%. So um, tough situation that, that um, it is helpful to know this information, um, but, but do know that this doesn't only touch our um, our calendar and our schedule and how we prioritize things, it does touch our heart um, with, with uh, empathy and genuine compassion for what you're facing and appreciation. Um, so your level of confidence that your business will reopen at previous levels of service. Um, again, we can see that um, where we started off very high three weeks ago, um, that has dropped almost to zero. Um, and those who are feeling uh, uh, high confidence have met in the middle with those who were feeling low confidence last week uh, and uncertainty continues to be our number one sense um, from our businesses and has been throughout. Yeah, I'd just like to add there too that um, we were writing a press release last week about our Mayflower project, our Mayflower initiative. And I took a press release that was um, a draft that I'd been using to use as a template. And it was dated um, the, when we canceled farmer's market back in March. And there was a paragraph in there and it said, we expect to resume the farmer's market April 3rd. And I just looked at that and I thought, gosh, what, what innocent times those were. We, we didn't know um, what we didn't know. And so as we continue to move into that sort of the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns, we're all feeling this, this confidence kind of continue to evolve. 
Um, and so then last week we asked if your business has applied through uh, for assistance through the Federal CARES Act, and we see um, the vast majority, almost 70%, applied for both the PPP and the EIDL loan. And I believe that was the last graphic that we had. Um, so we are, looks like we've got 15 uh, respondents. I'll leave this poll open just for about another 20 seconds or so and then close it out. Um, we appreciate you Sorry. sharing with us um, where you are right now so that we can make sure that we're allocating the time of downtown slow staff to meet your needs and sharing that information um, with our local elected officials. Great, thank you. And just a few words about the, uh, the survey that we do each week. Um, I wanna make really clear that this is not a statistically viable survey. This is not, you know, we're not taking all 625 of our member businesses and getting a random sampling. This is just the people who are participating on this call. Thank you for being here. There are now 53 participants on the call, um, but not all of you are also taking the poll. So it's a good touch point, but it's not necessarily uh, representative of the, the greater reality. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's not still powerful information. Okay, and we will share those results again with you next year. Um, we've got, not next year, next week. Um, we've got a great question here from Miriam. It'll just feel like next year because every week is like a year. Um, we are accepting still signups for the Mayflower Initiative. Um, yes, that project launched last week and we're really excited about how fantastic downtown looks. Um, we have more than 50 businesses that have partnered with, I think, um, 40 artists who've come through and signed up. And this is just so lovely and smile provoking. Um, we invite you to go to our website, uh, downtownslow.com slash Mayflowers, and you can pull up a map and even the icons on the map are little flowers. Um, and you can see links to the artists, you can link to their social media so you can support the artists. Um, and you can also link to the business so you can order takeout or um, purchase some retail to, that you can pick up the next time you come downtown. This project officially launched last week, but it is an initiative and it is ongoing. So if you want to paint flowers in your window, go for it. Um, if you'd like to, to bring in a friend to do it, if you want your kids to come in and help out, that's a great um, fun family activity. And I just want to say thank you to all of you who have embraced this creative initiative. And, you know, maybe we'll do this again next year. It doesn't have to be something that happens uh, just when it's when we're in a crazy shutdown time. So um, it really does bring joy. And uh, we got some great media coverage. KSBY came out and did a story last week. And I understand that they were downtown again this morning. So everyone's looking for some good news to report. Uh, the Mustang Daily also did a story that got some really good engagement from uh, Cal Poly students who are um, doing distance learning right now, and we're thinking about their favorite downtown businesses. And I got some great feedback from former interns um, and Cal Poly students who are learning about that program. So kudos to you, keep it up, and thank you for letting our, our windows bloom. Um, and with that in mind, I want to um, give a big thanks and shout out to two extraordinary uh, photographers, videographers, and community people. Um, Stefan and Elisa Geraldo and their son Isaiah came out and um, they shot a, a photo of us in front of our office. You can see Downtown Brown has a face covering here. Um, and they've been working on an extraordinary video that I'm going to show for you now. And I encourage you to share this, to watch it, um, and enjoy it. I, Zoom is not the best medium for watching video, but uh, let me just show you what, we're, what they've been working on.
Okay, I'm crying. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that. Um, sorry the audio didn't come through. It's a really beautiful song that was written by uh, Reese Galito, who is a, a fixture at Hunters in the Plaza through, um, she plays with the Tipsy Gypsies and with the Kicks. And um, I'll share that link out so that you can see it. It's really just a beautiful video. So thank you for participating. Thank you, Steph and Elisa, for donating your time and putting this video together. Um, it really just, Obviously, I'm verklempt. <laughs> so um, thank you very much. And uh, if you have any comments or questions or feedback, please um, let us know. Reach out to us. You can find us on Instagram. Um, our ambassador, Austin Bertucci, will be out doing an Instagram Live video today at noon. Um, he'll be at Linnea's Cafe. And then he'll be with Open Air Flowers, who are opening up uh, especially for Mother's Day coming up this weekend. So as you're getting ready to celebrate the moms in your life, please consider supporting downtown business. Um, get some brunch, get some uh, pampering materials, get some books, whatever your mothers need to have to be supported. Um, I thank you, and I'm seriously emotional right now watching that video. So. Um, Thank you for uh, being here with us and we look forward to seeing you again here next week. Thank you very much. <laughs>